Gary Bertles, really the find of the season for Nottingham Forest, if not for football here. John Robertson, the expert penalty taker, and behind him, Tony Woodcock, the man who's found his scoring touch again. Well, David Needham, the big defender. Martin O'Neill, well, it's in fact with his back to us is Archie Gemmell. Great little worker in midfield. And behind him, Martin O'Neill, hoping that St. Patrick's Day will mean something for him. Frank Clark, that veteran fullback. And now Southampton coming out. Led inevitably by Alan Ball. Wembley almost is his second home. Laurie McMenemy doing a good job, although our spies down there say they are fantastically relaxed at the moment. Steve Williams behind him. And Malcolm Waldron, a young local boy defender. So you've seen that already. And now, on a bright sunny day at Wembley, after all the bad weather, the crowd can see them too. And you notice straight away that Peter Taylor is leading out Nottingham Forest. Where is Brian Clough? surprise or two those uh, couple of incredible characters and for the first time the manager not leading out his Wembley side it's his right-hand man Peter Taylor who gets the honor and unnoticed almost by the crowd there's the man you might have expected would have been leading out Nottingham Forest today it's Brian Clough and the dignitaries for the afternoon uh, coming out for the presentations on the left, uh, Lord Westwood, the president of uh, the Football League. And on the right of the picture, Dr. Artemio Frankie, the president of UEFA. So John McGovern doing his introductions. Six, big Terry Geno, the goalkeeper, Nick Holmes, Chris Nickel, Terry Curran, and the little substitute there, Tony Seeley. Look at a smile on his face, and no wonder. It was only on Tuesday that he knew he was going to be in this cup final squad, and it was the biggest surprise to him when Laurie McMenemy, his manager, told him yesterday, you're the substitute. ineligible but Colin Barrett who missed last year's final through injury is back only his second game since he was injured early in the season otherwise the faces and the names are now well known meanwhile the Southampton manager Laurie McManamy fields the team that beat West Bromwich Albion in the FA Cup last Monday is a decision that gives Austin Hayes a Wembley place after only six first team games this season some contrast to Alan Ball playing his 32nd game in this stadium the substitute, Tony Seeley, only included in the squad on Tuesday, but he's been doing well in the reserves, yet to play a full game in the first team. But here is uh, Austin Hayes, only five foot six inches tall, a London boy, 
quite a day for Southampton when he joined them because the same day, Steve Williams, the skillful young midfielder, also joined and the pair have shared the same digs in Southampton ever since. It's the same sort of fairy tale for Forrest Gary Bertles. Didn't force his way into the first team until September. Since then, he scored 17 times. He links up now with Tony Woodcock. After a fairly barren season, Tony got back amongst the goals on Wednesday night with two against Norwich. Meanwhile, in the background, putting pressure on the striker is Trevor Francis, that million-pound man, not eligible for this final, so he sits it out. The referee today, it's, as I've told you, Peter Reeves from Leicester. He's a FIFA referee. And uh, the crowd here, in fact, the receipts for this Wembley crowd today, top £400,000. So here we go. Southampton in a chain strip of yellow with blue shorts, attacking the goal to our right. It's the same colour strip they used when they won the FA Cup against Manchester United in 76. Nottingham Forest in red with white shorts. And Peter Shilton with the first touch of this new football to be used in the league next season, white with a red band around it, so that it's easy to see in all conditions, say the Football League. And incidentally, it will only be manufactured by British companies. Lloyd whacking that one away, and that's going to go for a goal kick. Quite a contrast, in fact, between the two goalkeepers today. Here's Terry Geno. Just over a year ago, he was playing for Halifax and he cost Southampton £35,000. At the other end, well, you know him well, Peter Shilton, £340,000 when he joined Nottingham Forest. And Clark getting in first. Frank Clark, I suppose, for two or three seasons now, everybody's been saying, well, someday somebody's going to skin him, but uh, nobody does at the moment. He's using his old head very well. Over 400 games for Newcastle United before he joined uh, Forrest on a free transfer some four years ago. A terrible record. Golak with the throw. Ball playing it back to him. Oh, Golak playing it in nice and firmly again to Ball. Williams now trying to switch it wide, but it's an offside. The flag on this side is up against Curran. It's an amazing turnaround since they won the Cup Southampton in 76. Uh, Only two remain from that side. David Peach is one, and Nick Holmes, number 10, is the other. Woodcock ducking in there, playing it wide now for Robertson. Crossed in well towards Bertles. Well saved. Well, Robertson certainly showed what he was made of there and the threat that he could cause Southampton down that left flank. Crossing that ball in well, it was Bertles who got up and Geno who got down well. Well, Larry Lloyd's header finding Tony Woodcock. And Woodcock looking very sharp indeed. He hasn't scored many goals this season, in fact only seven, but uh, I see in these opening minutes he looks full of fire and running. Golak again inside the ball. And now O'Neill, and now Bertels. O'Neill again. Yes, this time finding Barrett. Cross coming in towards Gary Bertels. And somehow Southampton crowded him out. Well, there's a fair bit of talent on that bench today. Nottingham Forest on the right, as you can see, and Southampton on the left. in behind him that's the pass for Nick Holmes Boyer again Peach waiting for it now Peach getting it right foot perhaps no Alan Ball played in there now for Peach and a goal David Peach they're looking around for offside the linesman kept his flag down and Southampton have worked a superb goal by David Peach with 16 minutes gone. Here he is, Peach who started it. Played in here for Alan Ball. And goes on his run. Onside when the ball was played. Good decision by the linesman. Round Peter Shilton, right foot into the back of the net. And 
Southampton, Nottingham Forest nil, Southampton one. David Peach, the man who never seems to fail from the penalty spot, has now got, well, a real genuine goal. And what an important one it could be. Frank Clark. Ertles. Well, the big man not showing any emotion, but that's a tremendous start for Southampton. The underdogs here, certainly so far as the bookmakers are concerned. Here's Woodcock. on this side if Curran can hoist one far enough Boyer's in there and Holmes was almost in there what a brave and a good piece of goalkeeping by Chilton well they thought Holmes would be a danger man and as uh, Curran lifted that one in there Boyer nearly got what could have been a decisive touch there Holmes was there too look at that brave bit of keeping signs of only a good game himself he's letting enough go to suggest that he wants it to be a spectacle ball peach hayes ball again very confined space but he did so well to find david peach holmes playing it in again towards austin hayes ball wanting it back again and getting it onto the byline and a good cross by him towards boyer Oh, my word, and uh, Boyer did well to chest it down, and it was charged away in the end by Clark. A lot of skill in that little bit of play, though, by Southampton. By Ball and by Boyer. Played on that time by Robertson for Bertels. Played for Woodcock. Is this the equaliser? Well, Peach was across there when it could have been dangerous and Peach, I must say, is having one of those days when he can do no wrong. As Bertels brought that in now for Woodcock, just look at Peach getting in there. Nice backward header by Williams. There's Lloyd. Woodcock touching it in for Bertels. Played in now for Gemmell. And again, David Peach. And he finishes it off by turning it away. Goal scorer and twice the saver of what could have been equalizers by making really brilliant interceptions. Woodcock jockeying to find a yard and find it for Robertson. Come for Frank Clark now. And again, Peach is in there, but uh, there was a foul on Frank Clark. By Nick Holmes. And a free kick for Nottingham Forest as we come to half-time. There's the wall being lined up. That's Terry Geno's view of it. Now, Robertson and Clark behind it. I imagine it would probably be Robertson who might well try and lift it to this side. Indeed, he has. They all go in there. And O'Neill with a chance to turn it back. And that might go anywhere. And in the end... Oh, my word, O'Neill, my word! No, it didn't in the end. an incredible sequence of events no wonder Geno looked a bit relieved there and a bit concerned as well off the top of Chris Nichols head and it's really whacked in here by Martin O'Neill could have gone anywhere and now it comes off the head of David Needham there back to O'Neill again and scrambled wide of the post playing it inside again there Williams's header getting a bit of height on it 
McGovern trying to make something of it. O'Neill's right in there. Will it come for Forrest now? It was Holmes who hacked that away when it began to look most dangerous for Southampton. Good spell this for Nottingham Forest. The best they've had. In from Robertson. Bertles almost shoved off that ball, it seemed, as he tried to get a header in there. And Southampton get it away again with ball. Play down for Hayes. And back it goes to Shilton. We're into time added on for stoppages as the half-time whistle goes with Southampton leading through the goal by David Peach. Beautifully worked by him, but it wasn't only Peach's goal scoring, it was his defence as well that has been such a contribution for Southampton. The biggest contribution of all, though, coming inevitably from that man in the middle of the field, Alan Ball, who's been everywhere cajoling and arguing with his teammates and making sure they keep on the right track. A tremendous solo performance by him that has given and he not even at half time is he going to stop talking tremendous performance by him and now the talking has got to start from brian clough and from laurie mcmenemy who must be well pleased with the way that his side has come here taken on the favorites and at the moment is beating them by a goal to nil laurie so far so good can i ask you what you said to the players at half time well i'm going to tend to tell you everything i said martin but uh well, basically, I think we won that first half and deserved, deservedly, we got the goal. But uh, my main theme was if the fellow's worth his salt, he's going to G him up. And he's definitely worth his salt because he's proved it what he does. They came back in the last 10 minutes, Laurie. Just before half time. Did you say anything particularly about the threat of John Robertson? Yeah, well, they came back. Well, Robertson, yeah, we, uh, Ivan Gorlach's a little bit uh, casual at times there, but he feels as if he's getting pulled into Woodcock and uh, he's right we've had to do something about that but we need to get further forward as we did early on and t and play football just settle down and play but we've got a battle again because th uh, they won't take this line down they'll get up and have a go won't they long way to go yeah. thanks a lot larry well a unique uh, quote there from a cup final manager in a half-time interval there they know they've got to go on battling because Forrest aren't going to take this lying down as we welcome you back to the second half with Southampton leading by a goal to nil. Southampton in the yellow shirts attacking the goal to our right. It's Robertson. And now Clark. Southampton who beat Birmingham, Derby, Reading after a replay, Manchester City and Leeds to get this far. Play on a good advantage played there by referee and it's Archie Gemmel in. Oh and stopped by Gemmel. Oh my goodness it just went past the post off Archie Gemmel's knee and Gemmel well, we had a defender getting through to make the important breakthrough for Southampton. And look how Gemmel comes through here. Off Keno's knee, and I'm not at all sure it didn't come off Alan Ball to go behind for the corner. So it was off Alan Ball. It could so easily have been an incredible own goal. And a corner for Nottingham Forest. Golak, running it away. Curran, oh, nice. And sidestepping Archie Gemmel. And Austin Hayes, but Curran's going to go on his own. Brought down, Shilton out, no free kick, and I fancy Curran a little disappointed with some justification. What a startling break, though, by Terry Curran. He must have run all of uh, 40 yards there and looked as though he might get a blistering shot in until the infringement. Except that no free kick was given. Here's Peach. Ball. Touching it on there for Peach, and it never really was his ball, though. And maybe a chance for a quick forest break from deep here now, as Bertels takes it up and plays it on here for Gemmel. Playing very much more forward now in this second half, taking the fight to Southampton. And here's John Robertson and Golak with him, and Curran coming back quickly as well. Golak getting in there, and Gemmel playing it on for McGovern. Forrest looking a little more aggressive in the second half. Here's Robertson now. Can he get a shot in? Oh. And a goal there! Oh. Well, Bertels got a chance he should never have been allowed. So, Gary Bertels...
Wales, the young man who started the season in the reserves, has scored 17 goals, notches up another one, and look how it's given away by Southampton here. Golax after him. And just look at how the defence waver there. And so the Bertles gets the chance to put it into the roof of the net. Chris Nicholl, I'm sure, will go on cursing himself for not having got that ball away when it was so easy to do it. And now we're back at 1-1. And who knows, the pendulum might start to swing Forest way. certainly began in aggressive mood in the second half for us. Gemmell playing up so much more. And that's an easy one for Geno. Had the ball across the line. The flag was waving in any case a free kick to Nottingham Forest. Archie Gemmell calling Larry Lloyd forward. 1-1. And you sense an epic cup tie in the making. Geno wanting the wall lined up. Larry Lloyd, a man that he'll look for because Lloyd is in a position to take the header from Robertson's free kick. Robertson with the free kick. And in fact, it was Needham who went in there first. Golak with the header there for Chris Nickel. Golak's throw. has balled it in the first half has had a tremendous influence on these opening minutes of the second half and Geno there to gather it before Tony Woodcock can get there well after the snowstorms of yesterday what a change today yes and uh, McGovern was floored by Williams who's being called to the referee before Clark Hayes they've certainly been thrown out of their stride in this first part of the second half of Southampton and so uh, people like Alan Ball and Williams and Holmes have got to get hold of that midfield and Gemmell is having such an influence on Forrest in this opening period of the second half here's Burples doing there I thought for a moment the whistle must have gone and it very nearly did for a goal just look at this I mean he had that covered all ways and it crept right along the line until Nick Holmes got it away yes he's looking a bit earnest now that famous tight lip look of his when things aren't quite the way they should be by Nicol. Here's Curran. Played in for Alan Ball. A 
accelerating away from Gemmell and Frank Clark in there once more. Then they got him on a free chance for in 1975, and indeed when he went to Nottingham Forest in the second division, he could hardly have thought that he would have had the glory that he's had. Frank Clark, but here's David Peach looking for a bit of glory for Southampton to add to the goal he's already got. Clark getting it away. Bertles playing it on. And Waldron, oh, yes, a bubble very nearly did him there, and it may well have done, as Woodcock takes it up. Played there for Bertles! Offside, offside, no goal. No goal. Lionsman on the far side was flagging for an offside, but it all began, really, when uh, the bubble unseated uh, Southampton. Cock took it on, slipped it there for Bertels, and Bertels put it into the back of the net. But the goal was disallowed. Now Barrett. While you would never believe the difference in Forest in this second half. Here's O'Neill. I should think there must have been a few words of magic in that dressing room at half-time to really stir them up. O'Neill now. No penalty, no free kick. And on ball stopping Martin O'Neill. So, Peach for Southampton. A lazy ball played in there for Bertels. And a skill there, but not quite enough. Curran going in there. It looked to me as though he took McGovern late. And the yellow card is coming out for Terry Curran. A late challenge on John McGovern. This is the moment that brought about the yellow card. So a free kick for Nottingham Forest. And they're taunting him with Forest rejects. Terry Curran, he was at Forest when Brian Clough arrived there. Geno punching that one away, taking no chances. Robertson. Gemmell, Lloyd right in there, but shot wide of the mark, and it was Alan Ball who, hit more than anybody, put Larry Lloyd off there, tumbling like a little acrobat there, really, as he tried to get in the way of Lloyd's onrush, and that, I think, says it all for Southampton at the moment. Look at him. Having a go at David Peach about something on that far side. Again, Gemmell well forward, as you can see. And they could be caught out by this throw from Robertson. Gemmell playing it in there. And, uh, in fact, Bertels down on the ground. Couldn't turn it in. But uh, once in the first half, they were badly caught out by Gemmell getting into space from a quickly taken free kick and then from Robertson's throw there. And that could easily have been so costly. Robertson... Woodcock, combining well with Bertels, good tackle by Golak, and a good piece of refereeing, and the flag was up late, but the flag is up nonetheless, it won't count, Bertels again gets the ball in the back of the net, <laughs> once that counted and twice that hasn't, and uh, the linesman a little late putting his flag up, I must say. McGovern playing it through, and I would say that he was certainly in mind with David Peach. And so the goal is disallowed for offside. But the fact 
they've had the ball in the Southampton net three times in this second half in the first 24 minutes, even though only one has counted. Must, in fact, be of some concern to Southampton and, above all, to their manager, Laurie McMenemy, in the centre there. No visible emotion. Oh, yes, there is a bit of emotion there. He wants to shout and find somebody's attention. That's not easy at Wembley because you're so far off the touchline. Now Curran against Clark. Gemmell getting back quickly to help Clark should he need it. And he might need it. Crossed in nicely there. And it's McGovern getting it away. The ball bobbling away from Southampton there. But a very good run. Maybe the best he's made in this game by Terry Curran. And now Gemmell trying to do the same. And Geno right out of his goal. Touch for Boyer. Barrett. Now Bertles. Going all the way, Bertles. He's on his feet. They're overjoyed. Strip the ball. Nickel desperately trying to get in there. That challenge won't work. And under the diving body of Geno, Nottingham Forest 2, Southampton 1. So Bertles, the overjoyed man who started the season in the reserves and has now become a true Wembley hero with both the Nottingham Forest goals. Handball there by O'Neill. doing a bit of well, <laughs> playing the game himself there I think and Laurie McManamy looking a little dejected on the left and here's Bertels well, certainly when the day dawns that Trevor Francis is uh, eligible for everything that Forrest can play him in I don't think it'll be Gary Bertels whose place he takes and a free kick given I I sympathise there with uh, I sympathise there a bit with Chris Nickel. There's nothing more frustrating when a player takes that to the corner flag there, and I tend to think that um, whatever he gets, he almost deserves. But I suppose he was whacked up the back there was Bertels, and that can't be allowed. O'Neill crossing it in, Peach, and here's Woodcock getting in. Gemmell. Woodcock. Southampton net, clawed out by Terry Geno. Tony Wilcock, the man back in form, as Archie Gemmell now plays that ball in there. A nice turn, in fact, here coming up by Tony Wilcock. Sharp angle, but the aim is short. Forest three, Southampton one, after Forest had gone into half time, second best and a goal down. Tony Woodcock then, with two goals against Norwich on Wednesday after a fairly barren season, now gets what could be the killer at Wembley, and I think Alan Ball will be realising that himself now. With about uh, seven minutes to go. Southampton are going to bring on a substitute. Seeley with a broad Geordie accent in fact from Wall's End uh, Boys Club will be coming on as Austin Hayes goes off Golak and Seeley brought down by Needham a free kick for Southampton about three minutes to go Here's Waldron. Holmes cut out by McGovern. 
Curran trying to get it back there again, but uh, Frank Clark has no intention in this great stage of the game of allowing that. It will be a throw for Southampton, though. since that shock defeat in 1969 for Arsenal against Swindon Town. I would think this is probably the best final we've had since then. Now Paul played on. Boyle's after it. Shilton's out. And Shilton gets it right on the edge of the box. That hadn't had been hit quite as firmly if Boyle had been well, he was quick enough off the mark. If Shilton maybe hadn't been quite so quick to spot the danger, who knows? Boyer again. Brought down, free kick, and more pressure on Nottingham Forest. And surely Southampton now are going to push every man. Jack in a yellow shirt right forward now. Ball playing it wide for goal. Well, the whistle's come up from the Nottingham Forest fans now. That's significant. Curran now. Can he at last get past Frank Clark? Sealy stopped though, and winning it back. No, Clark knew a little too much for him. Williams, not back to the keeper, surely. Time is the one thing Southampton haven't got at the moment. They're inside the last minute of the game. And it's all over, and Forrest become the first side to retrain the Football League Cup. You notice there that Laurie McMenemy went straight across to talk to Brian Clough. Peter Taylor and indeed it was a fine final and a marvellous one for Gary Bertels with two goals and for Southampton after such a brilliant first half it turned out to be a very disappointing second one Alan Ball who said he was going to enjoy it whether they won or lost because Wembley occasions will be few and far between for him from now on, Golak, the number two, the fullback, his first Wembley appearance. Steve Williams, it looks as though he's got a tear in his eye, that number four. And the two keepers, nice touch. And at Wembley, it's the uh, in the League Cup final, it's the losers who go up first. But what game losers they were. A really fine first half. A goal that was given away that put Forrest back on route early in the second half and then they went flat until they were 3-1 down and seemingly out of it until Nick Holmes gave them that glimmer of hope. Laurie McMenemy, well he knows how they've battled for him. Get your head up, you heard him see who saw him say to Terry Geno. Saying well done to each man of his team. He's not only a, a good coach, but he's a very good manager, Laurie McMenemy. And Alan Ball comes forward. To receive the tankard from Dr. Artemio Franchi, the president of UEFA. Terry Curran. 
solid game Malcolm Waldron had too. He's one of the unsung heroes. Terry Geno. Phil Boyer. Little Austin Hayes, who was substituted near the end by Tony Seeley. Steve Williams. Chris Nichol. Well, he'll have a nightmare about the equaliser, I'm sure. And Lottery McMenemy saying well done to the Nottingham Forest players as well, who are sent up those stairs by their manager, Brian Clough. John McGovern, one of the game's great pros, played in all four divisions of the Football League before he reached the age of 20, and has Brian, uh, followed Brian Clough from Hartlepool to Derby to Nottingham, and I think along the way has picked up a lot of the good things of football, and now he's going to pick up the Football League Cup. So, with the Forest players having savoured every moment of the afternoon out there on the pitch, we now join them in their dressing room. And what an afternoon it was for those two strikers of theirs, Tony Woodcock, and first of all, the match winner, Gary Birtles. What was his reaction to the goals in his first Wembley appearance? Well, I don't think it's still sunk in yet, you know, I'm still getting used to it. It's a bit, uh, a bit different from Midland League football, you know, it's a bit of a change. And they were two good goals. Um, well, yeah, the, the first one, in fact, was uh, they, they really handed it to you in a way, didn't they? Well, Chris Nichols stood on the ball and I just nipped in front and hit it in the roof of the net, yeah. Did you feel any nerves at all going out there? Slightly, yeah. But, uh, it wasn't too bad, actually. I was uh, quite surprised. Yes? Yeah. Tell me about your history coming to Nottingham Forest, because I think well, a couple of years ago you were, what, laying tiles, <laughs> were you? Laying tiles, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tell me about that. That was, what, in Nottingham? Or? That was in Nottingham, yeah. I worked for um, the same firm as my father, and that was about 70, 1976, and the boss came and saw me at uh, Enderby in Leicester and took me on a month's trial, and it just worked out from there. Uh, he was recommended to us from, a lo from the local club next door to us, and then I uh, popped along to have a look at him in a match, didn't get a kick, we pursued it, and eventually we took him on trial and, you know, for a few thousand quid. Down, it's all part and parcel of management, Brian. Um, the same ability of Peter Taylor goes into judging Gary Birtles as judging Trevor Francis, whether it's 2,000 or whether it's a million. Yes, but he paid you back today. I think he's paid us back all season, actually. He paid, us, he paid me back personally before he got in the first team, because he was my squash partner. <laughs> Why are you laughing at? That's right. true, he was my squash yeah. partner. Yeah? Yeah. And if he doesn't start getting three, he'll be my squash partner again. <laughs> Here's Tony Woodcock, who scored the important third goal. <laughs> Smiles everywhere, no wonder. Uh, I mean, it's been a funny old season for you with uh, an absence of goals, and then suddenly they've started to come at the right time. Yeah, ever since I was left out a few weeks ago, it's been going pretty well for me. You know, my performance as well as the goals. What did you feel about Forrest's performance today? Uh, I thought it was great, second half especially. You know, we came in at half time, one goal down, the manager said, if we just step it up, you know, we're going to win 3 1. And we got an early goal, and we never looked back ever since. Did you feel if you just stepped it up, it was good enough to win it for you? Yeah, if we just sort of knocking it around like the manager said, and just held on to it for a fraction longer, keep possession for a while, he said the goals would start coming, you know, and like I say, three, possibly five goals for us. Really? Mm. Mind you, the goal you got was a, it was a lovely turn, a difficult angle for you. Yeah, well, it was a, I think it was a, a good team goal, really. You know, we knocked it about on the right-hand side of the penalty box. It must have been half a dozen passes or so, and I had to check out, 
I think it was Archie who slipped the ball through to me and I just had the simple task of just knocking it past the keeper. And Gary Birtles too, tell me what it's like playing alongside Gary. Yeah, I think we're just starting to get an understanding together. You know, the past few matches, um, you know, we're starting to work well together and the goal seems to be coming. <laughs> you seem very cool and relaxed about it all after a Wembley performance like that. Yeah, well, we're getting used to it now. <laughs> No. So where did things change basically at half-time? What was, the, what was the message from in here? The message was that um, a ball is our tool, tools of the trade at uh, football, just like you'd be no good without this microphone. We were no good without the ball. Southampton had it more than us. When we got it, we were giving it away, so it was a balmy situation. That was put right in about 30 seconds at half-time. After that, we just relaxed. Frank Clark, you were pleased to say... I thought Frank Clark was the best player on the field today. His consistency was a credit to, to him and an example to everybody else. A 35-year-old to play in the second cup final in a year uh, was nothing short. And he made some of the younger players look amateurs on occasion. He's 35. He's 35. He's done well. He's had a few stitches, as you've um, gathered. And um, he's looking forward, I think, to European Cup football on Wednesday, yes. as we all are. But now you've got European football next year, which is the great bonus to come out yes, of the game like that this. was essential. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on wanting to qualify uh, through the league, obviously. But uh, we've, you know, made doubly sure today. One thing I've got to ask you is how it was that you didn't walk out with the team at the start of the day. I discussed it with Peter about a week ago, and I said to him, I said, you know, he needs exercise more than I do, Brian. I play squash, and he's putting weight on, like, <laughs> I'm only kidding. I discussed it with him a week ago, and I said it would do you good to get out with him to this time. And um, I didn't actually see him walk out, obviously, because we were bringing up the rear. But uh, he's part and parcel of it very much, and why not? They wouldn't let us both go out. You asked? No, we didn't ask this year. We asked last year, and having been refused last year, uh, we didn't give them the chance to say no again this year. But it was your way of saying well done to him. Oh, it's absolutely um, magnificent of Peter to take this side out. He was responsible for three quarters of them. We came in at half time very, very pleased with the way we played. And uh, second half, they came out very, very positive. Surprised me a little bit. And before we'd settled down, they'd equalised. And from then on, to give them credit, they played really, really well. Yes. You seem to boss so much of the midfield in the first half. Yeah, well, as we said, we went out, we went, we went at them, we went after them, we got the goal we wanted. Uh, in all, as I say, in all credit to them, it was a game of two halves, in all credit to them, they came out second half. I think because they had to, and we were disappointed in ourselves because from playing good football, getting at them, getting them on the break a little bit, we started giving the ball away. And consequently, if you give the ball away here, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because it takes a long time to get it back. But you seem to be doing your best to G everybody up in the second half. We had some marvellous yeah. shots of you really going around, you know, showing your fist and so on. Yeah. Was it just impossible to get a response out of Southampton in the second half? Uh, not really. No, the lads did the best they could. Uh, they got a grip of the game and, in all fairness, uh, it's hard to wrest it from them because, let's be fair, they're a good side. These are supposed to be the best side in Europe. And we're learning an awful lot. Uh, we've got a lot of, uh, of people who did first time here today. I think possibly it may have shown second half, but uh, we'll learn from it. And Forrest looking a little more aggressive in the second half. Here's Robertson now. Can he get a shot in? Oh. And a goal there! Barrett. Now Bartles. Going all the way, Bartles! First club to win the League Cup two years running. Hard luck, so.